You're listening to the Clean Comedy Podcast with your host, James Creviston. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Clean Comedy Podcast. It's James. And today I have another great comedian for you guys. What I really love about this, like this podcast is that I get to talk to all kinds of people from all walks of life that have them become comedians because we all bring something unique to, to like the story, the stage, all that stuff. So today I have Colleen Johnston. She's a mother, a wife, comedian, and she's coming to a local dive bar near you. So please welcome the very funny, the very talented Colleen Johnston. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So I, I love that your bio is mother, wife, comedian, because that um, two of those things are kind of like faux pas now, like they're a little bit frowned on. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, mm-hmm. especially as a comedian, too. Right. Like being a female comedian is hard enough as it is. But now add being a mother and a wife to that. Right. And it's insanity. Right. I, I I am a dad, but my wife will watch my two daughters while I do stand up. Right. That's not the same. It's hard. It's going to be 10 times harder for you because let's be honest, guys are terrible at watching our own kids. We're not going to lie. We, <laughs> we call it, we call it babysitting and it's our own kids. Like, wait, I have to babysit. It's like, no, come on guys. So, yeah. so. <laughs> so if that were the case, we would not make it because we have four and oh, we wow. don't have any uh, family support. So yeah. Wow. It had to be, I have to be mom and dad and my husband has to be mom and dad. We have to just be all in two of our boys are on the autistic spectrum as well so yeah bravo bravo (laughs) okay and you're in LA correct is that right like you're in LA yeah I've always I've always lived in well Los Angeles County is absolutely ginormous yeah Um, it's huge yeah I've always lived here (laughs) okay awesome okay and how did you did you start comedy before you got married and had kids or after like kind of tell us your origin story no, I um I actually suffered with depression so bad when I was younger that I could barely move. Um and then I found Jesus. I got married and thought everything was going to get better <laughs> and it didn't. But in the process I kind of slowly walked out of all my demons and um just signed up for an acting class. Yes, my dog is barking. I signed up for an <laughs> acting class. And after that acting class, I literally couldn't even sleep. It like was waking my soul up and uh, through that acting class. And I sucked, by the way. <laughs> I was like one of those. I also suck at acting. I suck, totally suck at acting. I get you. <laughs> but I loved it. But yeah. <laughs> but through that acting class, I, I took, I went to the Groundlings. Okay. And took a class there. And then um, I was literally driving. I lived in Pasadena at the time. And I literally looked to the, my right. And I saw that this little coffee shop was having a comedy night. And um, I've always had a writing ability. Like my papers would usually be chosen for school and given as an example. So it's something I could just do. But joke writing is Olympics. <laughs> yeah. And so um, that was a whole new skill I had to learn. and. Yeah, it's it's in terms of getting decent in comedy, it's taken me a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, it's comedy's hard. A lot of people I've seen a lot of people go, well, I'm funny naturally. Like I could be a stand up and you're like, there is so many other pieces to this puzzle yes. that you don't realize exist until you start getting in the world. And then you go, OK, this is this is way harder than I thought. So well, Jerry Seinfeld said it best. He said, yeah, we all know people who are naturally funny who are at a party and just get people rolling. Uh, we all know those people, but it's when you say, go be funny on a Tuesday night in Burbank in front of a room full of people you don't know, yep. that's for the professionals. <laughs> yep. That is, and that's the hardest part. And that's a scary thing because I think Jerry's also the one that says, uh, he has a joke about um, being, being dead or giving a speech at the funeral and more people would rather be dead than have to give the eulogy yeah. or give the speech, yeah. which is true. Like public speaking is a, a fearful thing and it's not something we push a lot uh growing up like even my kids when they're in school and they're like i have to give a report they get all nervous and i'm like why are you nervous it's easy just go up there and you already prepared you have your stuff you know where you just say it like there's yeah. no but we don't push that and, it, and so people like get all nervous about it. it's like that's nah, it's fine that's why i always i'm a big believer in improv in that improv should be taught in schools to kids and do everybody because it would let us 
be able to interact but more. And also it's a big yes. And right. Cause a lot of times the biggest conflicts we have in our lives and in the world is that we say, just automatically say no to something. No, but if we yes and everything in life, then maybe we'd solve like a ton of the world's issues. I don't know. That's just me being yeah. <laughs> philosophical and hopeful, I guess. I don't know. No, it's important. The Mormons are, do a good job at that. I, I, I'm in the San Gabriel Valley where it's very methy or Mormon, just two kinds of white people, basically. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the Mormons are great. The, the, the Mormons are a lot whiter, FYI, just so everybody knows. <laughs> no, I'm in San Dimas. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we were uh, the tw- tweakers at Raging Waters, but um, <laughs> Mormons were there too. Raging Waters is a big melting pot for yeah, Mormons. yeah. But um, yeah, they they grow up public speaking, at, yep. you know, every Sunday, Church. every you know, mm-hmm. everything. So they're really good. By the time they're adults, they're good salesmen. So they are the best salesmen. <laughs> I, I think our I think our solar guy was uh, was LDS, and so yeah, yeah, like super awesome, and they're nice, like so super great. Yeah. So that's perfectly fine, nothing. But yeah, that's a good that's a good skill to learn. Yeah. Um, now you also used to be a substitute teacher, yeah. So that means you went to college. Well, what, PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> what did you yeah. study? What What was your What was your major in college? What did you study? Um, I studied social work in college. Oh. I should have done English because, like I said. English literature writing was always like my passion, but I just, here I am from San Dimas area and a lot of us don't get out much. And I literally just went to the college next to me, which was Azusa Pacific university. And the English department was so flat and so boring. And I took Chaucer and I was like, get me out of here. So I did social work. I played Balderdash with paranoid schizophrenics, my entire internship. So that was fun. Need to write um, a joke about that. You sh- totally um, should. <laughs> but then after after that, I just got into teaching, and that's how I met my husband because I was teaching. Um, I was teaching like at a continuation high school, okay, in Long Beach. And then after I got married and had kids, and again, I have two sons on the spectrum. One one of my sons, my oldest son, is actually very severely autistic. So I just needed a job. I couldn't really get a career. I had to be at home for him because his 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 disability is so severe. So subbing kind of worked out for me. I did it for like six or seven years and uh, I'm glad I'm not doing that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I will tell you from my wife's experience, who who has a bachelor's and a master's in English that she wishes she would not have done that. So you, you did a good thing. And then my father-in-law is a social worker for LA County. That's like his entire job. So, so like literally you did the nice, you did the nice thing, right? Like that's, yeah. that's helpful. And, but now my wife works as a special education assistant. Uh, so she works with children with special needs, like all I'll give her a hug from me. Yeah. There, <laughs> yeah. there she's an, she's a saint. Like that's, she's an angel, man. I don't know. I, and I, and her kids love her. Like they'll see her out in the world and just like, yeah. Miss Crystal, Miss Crystal, like run towards her. So you just see like children running down an aisle towards my wife. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's happening right now. So. Yeah, I was saying like as a substitute teacher, the kids are mean, you know, and yeah. um, I subbed with the autistic kids and these two kids were like um, back to back. They they opened this whole autistic portal through a banana and talking about, you know, robot alien cats playing checkers. I was like, I want in that portal. These are right? mean. I want to be with you guys. <laughs> Give me a banana, you know, so that's pretty awesome. So how long have you been doing comedy? How long have you been doing stand up? Like just the art of stand up? Um, I have been doing stand up for about I think this is my 8th year. Okay. And what was the, what was the hardest part of stand up to you like when you started stand up? What was the thing that you struggled with I'm the so most? I'm so sorry. Someone is knocking at my door and they won't You're go good. away. Let me break right. right back. No worries. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on a, I'm literally in a meeting. Yeah. All right. Alexa, stop. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. It happens. I'd never have anyone at my door now. 
<laughs> um, what was it? Okay. So when you started stand up, what was the hardest part for you? What was the thing that you struggled with the most? Cause some people, you know, struggle with be, actually being on stage and stuff and being nervous there. Some people struggle, like you said, with joke writing stuff. Some people just struggle with remembering their, their content and, and getting their jokes out and making it feel natural. What was the struggle for you? What did you have a hard time with? Fear. Fear of what was the fear of man fear because I've never, I mean, I think people who knew me growing up would their jaws are just on the floor knowing that I'm doing stand up. Like literally people that I grew up with, like, no, that cannot be. No, no way. I was quiet. I was a quiet person. I, you know, I, I, I was just so shy and, um, yeah. So for me to get up there and tell jokes, I mean, I remember the first, I went to flappers comedy club, but they're open mic. I was so nervous. I showed up like two hours early. Cause I just <laughs> I couldn't even think straight. And I had this routine that I'd written down and I was like trying to ferociously memorize what I'd written. And I went to a restaurant beforehand and I was sitting there going, oh, you know, eating the, uh, like rehearsing my lines. And I see the, the server come up into my line of vision. She's like, are you okay? Like, should I call? <laughs> and then I was still doing it um, when I finally, when they finally were letting people in and this guy turned around and he's like, you know, there's medication for that. And I'm like, it took it. It's not working. But yeah, I was just the fear of it. I had to wrestle with my fear. And then finally that slowly ebbed away. And what was ironic is that what I was more nervous if I had to go into Hollywood like go into the comedy store. I was more nervous for that. That was more intimidating. But the, I realized the audience was a lot more uh, pleasant and easy and ready to laugh more in Hollywood. Out here where I live in the San Gabriel Valley, like and you get into like a little bit of the Inland Empire, the, the audience is rough. Yeah. It's more tough. I've done, I've done urban shows at the Ontario Improv and uh, uh-huh. been the only, only white guy on the lineup. And uh <laughs> I had to channel my inner Bernie Mac, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to like you have to be like prepared, be prepared to like get heckled if you say something stupid and just be prepared to just just roll with it. But yeah. I found they're less they're less forgiving, yeah, outside of kind of LA or proper. But if I if you, and the, but the comedy store is also intimidating, just so like everyone's yeah. clear. It is intimidating. It's like walking into a, into like Mecca or like yeah. old Hollywood or like into like this sanctuary, right? And I, I love shows there, but it, it does feel the moment you, you question yourself, you go, am I supposed to be here? Do I deserve exactly. to be in this, in these rooms? Do I deserve to be here as a comedian? Right. The, probably the guests and the people that come watch the show, they never have that feeling. But if you're a comedian, you feel like other hollow, this is hollow ground. Like other famous people have walked these, these grounds and done things that I want to do. And it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, ice house has that feeling to it too. Or yeah. the old ice house. I haven't been since they redid it, but it felt like hollow ground of very much like, oh my gosh, this is like, you know, comedy was, there's a, so much was born here. Yes. Um, so, so it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, what is this thing that you struggle with now as a comedian? What's your, like your hurdle? Cause like a lot of comedians I know will all, like avoid writing jokes and like, oh, I like to write on stage or they will avoid open mics. So they will avoid all kinds of stuff. Like, do, do you have the thing that you avoid? Yeah, I'm weird that way. I I hate rehearsing. I don't okay. know why. I mean, I'll write all day because I that's probably more my comfort zone because it's something that I knew that I could do. But um in writing, you know, I'm just like downloading ideas and letting my ideas fly. And there's not a whole lot of hard work to it. I'm just letting everything go. But when I have to trimming the fat. I yeah. think when, you, when you, I put, I, I hold up my son's bubble wand and I like try to work it out in the, to the wall and you have to trim the fat. I find trimming the fat to be the hardest part and I hate rehearsing. And I went to an open mic last night at the Glendale room and they were only, it was my first time there and I got there early and they only let the first 20 people in. So oh, I, had wow. to, I had to go home. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's open mics, but you know, I'm, like I said, I'm here in San Gabriel Valley there's an excellent open mic that's very intimidating a dive bar in Covina called the Chatterbox. And that's a little bit Mecca-ish too. Like if you can do well at the Chatterbox, Steve Hernandez will book you for a Sunday show and he gets legit people. It's That's awesome. Yeah. 
I never heard of the Chatterbox. I yeah, wow. well, that's that's interesting. I'm gonna have to go there at the end of this month. I'm gonna have to go down there and th- yeah. throw the dice. Yeah. I did a I did an open mic in uh, at Copper Blues, which is uh, Levity Live in Oxnard. So okay. I went out there, and uh, I only was I was just trying to really all I wanted to do was work out this one bit. I've been working. I have this other set, and I've been doing stuff. There's one bit that I've just started doing. It's probably that's probably the third time I did that bit. And I'm just trying to work it out and I want to make sure it worked. And so I'd done it with my writing group and I'd done it with other people that I know, like other comedians, and it all kind of flowed. I was like, all right, this is the first time in front of a crowd crowd and we're going to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't realize it was also a competition at the same time. (laughs) So I had no idea. So I did this. I like, I just want to do this bit. Like I did my, I'd have bits that I know worked because I wanted to get to that bit. So I knew I had to like flow it in. And so I did those bits. I did that bit. It went really well. I got like the proper response I wanted from the, from the punchline and where everything was. So I was like, okay, this works. But I like, but after it's funny, after I got the first laugh on the first big punchline that I knew I needed that laugh on, I forgot where I was. Cause I was so excited in my head that this worked in real life. I was like, Oh, it works. Like, okay. I know it worked with everyone else, but like it work works. And I was like, Oh wait, where was I supposed to be at next? And so I forgot. And it slowed me down and then I like finish it off. Yeah. But yeah. then I get a text message from the, from the po- host. Hey, you got third place. And oh, I was like, that's so cool. I was yeah. like, what? I was yeah. like, okay, that's awesome. Yeah. I was like, I just wanted to work this bit. I only cared about this bit working. <laughs> and it was, and it was something I like really had worked on. And my, my wife was like, this is hilarious. Like, this is great. Uh, Cause a lot of my jokes are about my family, my daughters, that kind of stuff. Do you have a theme or a, a topics that you like to talk about? A lot of comedians have like things they like to talk about. You know, you'll go and you'll see like the weed comedians or like, you know, <laughs> the, the single guy comedians or yeah. whatever it is. Well, do you have like stuff that you like to talk about? Well, I was pleasantly surprised that people wanted to hear about my kids. Um, so even and especially my son affected by autism. You know, I talked about um, how, uh, you know, I said, you know, with autism, his sensory system gets overwhelmed. So I take him to a party, he'll go off in the corner and start licking a window. And so I'm surprised some people are like, oh, I don't know if I want to hear about this because, you know, people want to be carefree. Right. For the most part, um, I've gotten a very positive response when I talk about him and was, you know, just saying how, I don't know, I've, I, talked about a poem he wrote to me and how he likes to talk about sharks and it's interesting. And yeah, I also talk about my daughter and how she's kind of mean. <laughs> she's my oldest and she banned me. She blocked me on TikTok. And uh, yeah. How, how, how old? I have, I have 13 and 16. So that's like, what, how she, old is yours? She's 20. She's 20. Oh, wow. So she, she's still a little teenager-ish though. Um, yeah. She's a little delayed, a little delayed in that. Like, so she's living and we have like this little back house, back room area. And that just kind of opened up the space and opened up for less tension. You know, she yeah. can take all the tension and eggshells with her. But yeah, hopefully she'll come around but right now. I think, did she, was she in high school when COVID happened? Is that like, was she, yeah. I feel like that delayed a lot of kids from growing up by like about two years. So mm-hmm. I notice, um, like my daughter, my oldest daughter and friends and her friends, her age, they have a little bit of delay in their yeah. development uh, compared to what we're used to. Like she's a little more nervous to drive. Like she wasn't really, she's not really excited to drive. So she's like a right. little more. So it's like those things. And I think COVID kind of like stunted their, their social growth aspect. Right. And it right. sucks because two years on the computer, right. Going to school. It's not fun for anybody. Like that's wow. terrible. So I think that yeah. that's delayed that. So we're going to see the ramifications of that, of that, probably for the next five to 10 years yeah, on the, on I those agree. kids. And so hopefully it'll be okay. Like, I, I think it'll be okay. It seems like it's going to be okay, but uh, it's, it's dicey from time to time where you go, Oh, uh, that's interesting that that's what you're yeah. scared of or what's bothering you or whatever. It's a little more, okay. All right. I, now I have to understand. And at first I didn't understand. I was like, why, why is this bothering you? It doesn't make sense. And I was like, do you not remember? This is two years of their life basically gone. Like they, yeah. as a teenager, imagine feeling like, the world is over, right? Because we all felt like, oh, the world is over for this amount of time. Now as a teenager, your life hasn't even really got started, but yeah. now you feel like it's over. It's that's scary. So I was like, okay, that makes that makes sense. Right. Now you talk about mom topics, your kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else do you like to talk about? 
Um, I talk about, um, I talked about homeschooling, my son who's dyslexic. Um, I talk about my husband. Um, he's hard of hearing. We all are. Yeah. All husbands, all husbands are just because I use my, I use my veteran status on my wife. I'm like, I was in, I was in the war and I would, I, we shot a lot of stuff. Like I can't hear well. Yeah. It gets me out of trouble most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the yeah. time it does. Yeah. And I make fun of his, uh, his parents are actually, um, have passed away, but I, I had a bit because my husband's mom had him when she was close to 50. And so I just had wow. a whole bit about how she was nursing her baby and ordering off the senior menu at Denny's. <laughs> Gum some applesauce together when they're done. So. Uh, <laughs> they were both on the early bird special. They were both. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's funny. Now, what are your what are your goals for comedy? Like, um, are you just doing it as like a way to get out of the house and kind of like do things? Or do you have like, do you like, are you one of the you seem to me like a person who writes down goals and like their stuff, like maybe journals? Am I correct in that assumption? Oh, yeah. No, I have a journal for personal and then there I have right. I'm in stacks of notebooks um, goals. I, I really don't know how to write goals for comedy. I think what I'm going to start doing now is I realize this, I'm taking too long in my writing process. So I'm, I'm, I go every Thursday night. So I've literally been putting, putting all my eggs in one basket at the chatterbox. Now the chatterbox okay. is great, but you can't put all your eggs in one basket. So what I'm going right. to do is just hurry up my, um, my getting my jokes done to where I can start going out to other places, going to more auditions and things like that. I would, does your husband listen to your bits? Like, do you bounce bits off of them? Like, do you write them and then perform them for him? And he kind of gives you feedback or not really? Is that like not a thing that you guys do? No, his my wife does that. Humor. Yeah. His sense no. of humor is different. Yeah. <laughs> my, I think my wife and I, like, we have similar sense of humor. Like we literally, so no, probably most people don't know this. We literally bonded. I like we met one night in San Diego. We bonded over the movie Billy Madison. So if that if that gives you uh, any yeah. indication of our level of sense of humor, and like we will sit down and like there might be a thousand other movies that we can watch, but we will go watch Office Space again and again and again. <laughs> right? Like that is our sense of humor. Uh, I still watch Beavis and Butthead. She'll come in and go, "What are you doing? You're watching it without me." Right? It's like that's our sense of humor. So. Very much, we have the same sense of humor. So I work joke out jokes out with her a lot. I'll write stuff and I'll go, "What do you think about this?" And she'll go, "Oof, that's really wordy to get to what you want." And I'm like, "Dang it, why did I not think of that?" And so it's like a really good back and forth. And right. she like again, she's an English major, oh, so she'll, yeah. she'll very yeah, she'll very much be like, "That doesn't sound right." Like it sounds weird when you say it. I understand what you're trying to say. That's not the word you want to use, you know. So that's yeah, it's fun. And then I also have a writing group that I work with. That's twice cool. a month to, mm-hmm. and stuff. And then I have all my comedy friends. I'll, I'll, my friends will randomly get jokes texted to them or an audio file of me telling a joke. And then I'll get responses from them. Like, that's funny, that's but great. you're missing X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So yeah. do you have like a, do you have like a support group of comedians that you talk to or reach out to? See that you need that. That's what you need. That's what you're missing. That's your missing piece. <laughs> cause, we're, Cause comedians yeah. are savages to each other. Like we will say the meanest stuff to each other about each other's jokes. Yeah. Knowing that it's in, in just to help you get better at your joke. I've had people, I've had my best friends be like, dude, I can't believe you wrote that joke. This is the stupidest thing you've ever written. <laughs> now here's the, here's how you fix it. And I'm like, okay, well that's, you didn't have to start with that's the stupidest thing you've written, but okay. I get where you're coming from. So that's. I'm that's a lone a wolf. I'm a lone wolf. It, it, it seems like comedians, like we want to be lone wolves. We're really not because what we are is we are lo- misfit toys. <laughs> and, we're all, and we all need to be on the island together yeah and be, to be friends together that's yeah. the piece that that we need uh yeah. you need another comedian or two friends to help do stuff bounce ideas off of um so mm-hmm. anyone is near her or anyone wants to be her friend go hit her up <laughs> on instagram and yeah. work together especially yeah. especially female comedians like the no offense but if you add male comedians into it our point of view is so off from a female per- perspective <laughs> yeah. that we're going to give you bad joke writing advice because it's not the same thing right we don't see the same things the same way like yeah just go watch one episode of king of queens and you know exactly what i'm talking about like you're <laughs> not on the same page 
So is I Billy, love that show. Billy Madison is at the movie when he was like, oh, it's a penguin. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> it's so random. So random. <laughs> it's the it's the most random Adam Sandler movie there is. Yeah. But I love it because it has like all the silliest, funniest lines. And like Chris Farley's in it. It's just Norm MacDonald. It's just like such a good, silly film that would never get made today. You would never see that movie come out now. But I love that movie. We 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 watch it all the time. Um, it's it, it. I actually we watch it on our anniversary. Believe it or not, like that's one movie that we like watch on our anniversary. It's one of those things where just we bonded over that movie, and it's just yeah. our humor is very similar. We bonded over Beavis and Butthead. We love Idiocracy, like Office Space. Like we like silly stuff like that. Like I don't like dramatic, weird movies. I don't want to cry while watching a movie. Like that's <laughs> just not not who I am. I love action movies, right? And I love like whatever. And I'm starting to kind of come towards rom-coms i don't know if we're, are you a rom-com person um what's a rom-com i don't even know uh like 50 first dates would be a rom-com oh some or... of them some of them i'm i like to watch depressing documentaries <laughs> depressing documentaries true crime so i'm cooking dinner and i hate cooking dinner so I'll, that's the time i'll listen to a true crime documentary as well i'm cooking dinner so other people get moms who are listening to music and full of joy and birds are chirping. And I'm like, there's human tongues in the basement. Oh no. So yeah, my kids. You have better, to you better be writing a bit about that because that's hilarious. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. My daughter, my oldest daughter likes like true crime documentaries and true crime. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. no, this is weird. Like <laughs> we're a, I don't know. I think comedian, I think I'm a stereotypical comedian where we're kind of dark and um <laughs> like i'm an introvert and uh, melancholic and all that i don't look like it but i am <laughs> that's so funny yeah. i think yeah a lot of people think like assume that we as comedians are extroverts right we're outgoing there were the yeah. you know life of the party people and it's not true like especially i hate going places with my wife where she's told people that i'm a comedian and then they like mob you like oh oh what do you do with comedy do you have any jokes i'm like this is not, we're in, a, we're in the wrong situation for all of this. Like, this I know, is not. I hate that. I hate that. I, I need to think of a response where I can just on the fly be like, I always just explain. I'm like, you know, comedians are introverted and we're kind of melancholic. And no, I don't have a joke for you right now. You know, yeah. it's like, listen to my YouTube channel if you want a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like YouTube or you can come out to a show, you know, whatever. And so, yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of what that is. Now, if you could go back in time at the beginning of your stand up career, and give yourself one piece of advice, what would that piece of advice be? Um, it's going to take all the work. It's going to take the writing. It's going to take the rehearsing. It's going to take going out to the open mics. It's going to take all of it. So just do it. <laughs> There's no shortcut. That is, that is good advice for everybody. <laughs> because I think yeah. sometimes... We do think, especially now with like TikTok and stuff, like a lot of people think that's the shortcut way of like, oh, if I just am funny on TikTok, I'll get booked. And it does work for some people, but you see the glaring issues later on. Like you don't see it within like the first couple of uh, years or whatever of them doing it, but you start to see the cracks in that because they haven't done the rest of the work to get there. And I've also seen TikTokers who are like, oh, they're famous on TikTok, go do stand up. And it's not, you can okay. see, they have not mastered that. And it's kind of like watching a train wreck where you're yeah. like, Ooh, this is okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to watch because this is going to be fun to watch, but I feel really bad for them at this moment. But at the same time, I don't feel bad for them because you didn't prepare for any of this. You just, you jump the line. I was jumping the line. I guess that's not the right way to say it, but you, you jump steps. Right. And now you have to figure out how to on the fly, gain all those skills at one time and make it work. And so you're like, oof. So I, that's, that is a tough one. Yeah. Um, let's see. I had another question. I just, I just literally went out the window. Right. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, um, do you have any other, like, like, do you have any comedy goals that you have for yourself? Like a stand up special or album or something like that, or being on TV or being a writer or anything like do you have, what kind of goal stuff do you have? Um, I, well, could just continue with comedy and it's just a okay. faith walk. I feel like I was called to it. And uh, you know, the whole, the whole saying is many are called, few are chosen. 
Right. But, um, yeah, I feel like I'm called to it. I have a lot, you know, I, I, I can speak to growing up in a lot of dysfunction, growing up in narcissism, a narcissistic abusive environment. And that's a big hot topic right now. I haven't really found a way to broach that. I mean, I've tried, but, um, so yeah, I guess I haven't gotten to that layer yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, and autism, um, yeah. And I'm, and clean is hard. It's a lot harder and I appreciate the challenge, you know? So yeah, I think we're just, we're different talking about normal everyday stuff and, and making it funny, making it clean. Like Tom Papa, is it Papa yep. or Papa? It's Papa. Right. I've met him with like three times. Awesome guy. Amazing yeah. guy. Amazing yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's, he's so like just, one of my favorites. Yeah. So whatever, whatever is out there for me, I'm going to try to reach it. They're doing the work of comedy. Yeah. Yeah. He is actually the one guest that I've been trying to get like every single year. Like I constantly uh, am trying because he's like my favorite. I need to, what I need to do is run into him again somewhere like at the comedy store or comedy magic club or something like that. And just be like, listen, I just need, I just, <laughs> even if it's 10 minutes, just 10 minutes to talk to you. I, w- I would love to, because he's a super nice guy, but he's given me a ton of comedy advice over, over years. So I, I know he would probably be into it. It's just getting that connection, that moment of, Hey, and we talk and then like figure something out there. So it'd be awesome. Well, that's awesome, Colleen. I hope that the best. Oh, do you want to do churches? Like since you're clean and you kind of have faith and stuff, would you want to do churches? Is that like one of the goals? I did a church show just um, recently. And sure, I was surprised. I was like, I'm already clean. This is going to be fine. And then I looked at all my material and I'm like, oh, this isn't going to be as easy as I thought. And it was because it was my first time doing a church show. I was yeah. like. I didn't even want to say ass. I didn't want to (laughs) tell. I didn't want to talk about some of the topics because I'm just going to dive bars. So I feel very free to just say whatever I want to say. No, I'm just naturally, you know, I'm not crude or or crass, but um, MILF, you know, saying like, I'm, I'm a MILF in progress, like (laughs) say that, you know? Um, So it was harder than I thought, but yeah, I'm up for anything. That's funny. No, yeah. I always tell my kids that you can say three ber- words because they're in the Bible. It's like three curses, hell, ass, and damn. Those are like the three yeah. Bible <laughs> curses that you could say. Because I, like, growing up in Texas, I was always told those were the three acceptable words that you could say. They're Bible <laughs> curses. You're okay with it. So, and I grew up Baptist, so they're like really strict. So if they're saying like you can say those, I, I just tell my kids. I was like, don't tell them that. And I'm like, they could be saying worse words. Okay, like That's true. That's true. give them give them the bare minimum to play with. So that then they don't go further and, you know, say words that you're like, Ooh, that's, you know, cause there are some words that people say and you go, you're pulled back and you hear them in public and you go, Ooh, you said that in public out loud in front of other humans. This is not good. <laughs> not good. Yeah, I don't my, know my son was like running behind me in a grocery store and he was only like five. And he's like, mom is oh shit, a bad word. And <laughs> I looked at another mom like, Oh, this is kind of funny. And she kind of put her daughter close to her and she was like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, that's that's exactly kids, that's it. That's it. <laughs> kids, kids say the wild stuff. Well, where can people find you? Where can they find your stand up? Where can they find videos of you? All that kind of stuff. Shout it out on the podcast. Yeah, and we'll put it in the show notes too. Yeah, my my YouTube channel is um, Colleen Johnston Comedy. That's easy. Johnston. There's a T in there. Um, my Instagram is Leaners seventy five L E E N E R S, um, and I I. When I eat three minutes is what you get at Chatterbox. And so if I have a good set in that three minutes, I post it. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you, everybody, for, for watching. I'm going to put all the stuff in the show notes. So please like, subscribe, go to her podcast or go to her uh, YouTube, go to her Instagram and, and like and look and stuff. I see you have a Star Wars thing for today. Apparently, it's, uh, it is May the 4th that we are recording this. It'll come out way later, but did, that's how we're this a Star works. Wars geek family. Un- yeah. un- <laughs> same same here same here uh so thank you everybody please like subscribe please go uh subscribe to the podcast audio and on youtube i see it growing every every week so i really appreciate it uh keep it going and we're so grateful have a good one and we'll talk to you soon bye